Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we'll be making a psychological analysis on Dr. Yi Su Chang, who is also known as the father of plasmids, creator of big daddies, designer of the ace in the hole, and a major character in the Bioshock series. We'll be using the system of MBTI to review his cognitive functions to better understand his underlying psychology and the Enneagram to understand his motivations. We'll be starting off this analysis by first looking into his past. Yi Su Chang was born in rural Korea to a lowly house servant during the Japanese occupation of Korea between 1910 to 1945. It is unknown how he survived this occupation until adulthood. However, during World War II, from 1939 to 1945, Su Chang obtained opium, most likely from China, and sold it to the Japanese soldiers to fund his experiments. Luckily for Su Chang, opium is very addictive and quite a lucrative business. As you can imagine, he was highly successful, and in 1946, one year after World War II ended, Su Chong mysteriously disappeared from Korea and moved to Rapture. While in Rapture, Dr. Su Chong set up an independent research firm called Su Chong Institute and Laboratories. He was immediately contracted out to Ryan Industries and Sinclair Solutions. Nonetheless, Su Chong became dissatisfied with inconsistent funding from Andrew Ryan and secretly began working for Fontaine Futuristics. And while working for Frank Fontaine, Su Chong was paired with Bridget Tenenbaum, who discovered Adam within a sea slug. Together, they discovered the properties of Adam and processed it into an injectable serum called Eve. Thus, Adam and Eve were born, and the public loved it. These injectables introduced modified stem cells into the body, allowing for genetic modification and mutations within them. In simpler terms, it gave us scientific superpowers. Unsurprisingly, this would lead to a bigger demand, and Dr. Su Chong was up for the challenge. And as a result, most of the plasmids we experience within the game are Su Chong's creations. His lust for innovation would extend well past plasmids. He was also responsible for creating and pairing big daddies to little sisters, all while designing the mental conditioning program to convince the little sisters that gathering Adam from dead bodies was enjoyable, he also invented the pheromones that Andrew Ryan used to manipulate the splicers in Bioshock. And lastly, he was responsible for increasing the growth rate of Jack Wynand, aka the ace in the hole, and designing the controversial WYK program, Would You Kindly, which was a personal request from Frank Fontaine and would be the most important plot point within the game and series. I think you guys got a basic understanding of his backstory. So with that being said, we're going to be moving on to his cognitive functions now. Dominant function, introverted thinking. Analytical, detached, independent, informal, and internally focused, Yi Su Chang is an example of a TI user with an overdeveloped function. His goal within Bioshock is simple. He wants to experiment for the sake of experimentation. The whole reason why he went to Rapture was because he wanted to do this without limits. This desire and curiosity led him down a path of innovation and success, which is great for his reputation and wallet, but not so much for the people of Rapture who would suffer from his trial and error research. This is due to the unhealthy nature of his TI function being too developed, and as a result, Su Chong views people as guinea pigs to run potentially harmful tests on so he may find more scientific phenomenon. New phenomena. Thus resulting in a never-ending loop of experimenting, hoping to find reason to experiment further to perfect his theories or ideas. This type of attitude is exactly why he created so many plasmids, designed the little sisters, created the big daddies, and ultimately, his displeasure of how Jack came out to be. Baby is now a year old, weighs 58 pounds, and possesses gross musculature of a fit 19 year old. The results are disappointing. P.S. If you didn't know, during the events of Bioshock, Jack, the main protagonist, is 4 years old, with a 24-year-old's body and mass. I'm not even gonna lie here, Su Chang did the impossible. He made Jack skip infancy and went directly to adulthood within 4 years with functional motor skills, false memories, and an unquestionable obedience to the phrase, Would you kindly? Yet, he was somehow displeased? Honey! This example is also tied to his auxiliary function, but for now, we'll be moving on to the TI examples we can hear and see within game. And our first example can be heard on an audio recording located in the Dandy Dental Dents- In the Dandy Dental Dents- Jesus. In the Dandy Dental Dentistry. In the Dandy Dental Dentistry. On this recording, Su Chong is running a clinical trial for his new plasmid, telekinesis, and notices it can lift objects at distances without problems, move them with ease, but can't stop a speeding bullet. 
Yet, it can catch other fast-moving objects. He theorizes that the problem is not with the plasmid, but instead with human reaction time. Problem not with plasmid. Problem with reaction time. This makes sense and inspires Su Chong to create another plasmid that may eliminate that problem. Our second example is a little odd because it's more of a compliment towards Bridget Tannenbaum, which can be heard on an audio recording located in Olympus Heights. In this recording, Su Chong states that he doesn't respect her sense of hygiene or predictable style, but admires her scientific ability to figure out gene sequencing without proper training. He doesn't care about her discoveries or her physical applications, but rather her process in figuring out the problem through testing. This results in him referring to her as Mozart at the harpsichord when it comes to gene sequencing. Tenenbaum is the old time diamond in the rough. No formal training, no experience, but put her in front of a gene sequence and she's Mozart at the harpsichord. It's gonna sound silly, but to him, that's logical art. Figuring out a problem is the same as drawing a picture. Both start from nothing and finish with something. Our third example is a negative trait of TI, which is reluctance of accepting data that doesn't match your internal logical framework, unless personally understood. We can see this twice, once in Burial at Sea, after Su Chong views Columbia through a tear and finds the floating city idea ridiculous, it's stupid. and secondly, on an audio recording located in the Rapture Central Control Area, where Dr. Su Chong disregards information from both Augustus Sinclair and Gilbert Alexander after they try explaining what Vita Chambers are and how it could be used to bring back trauma victims back to life. Sinclair and Alexander try to explain the science to me, but Su Chong does not believe them. They keep saying plasmid reconstruction this and quantum entanglement and that, and they're both dead people come back to life. Bullshit! Su Chong would ignore all this information about the Vita Chambers, all because he thought it was silly and it didn't match his internal framework. Well, it turns out Su Chong would lose an enormous opportunity to conduct further experiments on the Vita Chambers, which could have greatly benefited him. And I know, it just sounds theoretical. But Su Chong's a genius, he could have easily figured out how to resurrect himself just like Jack. But I digress. Our last TI example can be observed in how Su Chong views little sisters and Jack. He doesn't view them as human, but rather something different entirely. They may act like humans or even look like them, but at a fundamental level, they are no longer human. For Jack, he thinks he's a jukebox ready to play whatever Fontaine wants him to hear. Not a person. He jukebox. As for the little sisters, he views them as extensions of the sea slugs. They are tools for Adam and his experiments. Therefore, why he mistreats Jack by having him break his puppy's neck. Break that puppy's neck. Would you kindly? No! No! Very good. Or why he ignores or abuses the little sisters, since they're just walking, talking Adam farms. After all, he's the one that programmed them. Proof is in DNA pudding. Auxiliary function, extroverted intuition. Originally, I was considering making this function his dominant function for how much he relies on it and how developed it is, and yet I didn't, because at the end of the day, he only uses his NE function to support his TI function which wants to take apart ideas and problems. This is done to understand how they function and for reconstructing them as he did with plasmids and with Jack's mind. With that being said, we'll start looking into his any functional traits, starting with his most prominent traits, restlessness, creativity, and imagination. Su Chong is never pleased. He always believes he can improve on an idea or change it completely for the sake of it. As for imagination and creation, Su Chong compares Adam to a canvas and plasmids to paint. He does this all while criticizing Tenenbaum for having a lack of imagination and being content with boring optimizations. For any dominant and auxiliary users, repetition is a nightmare. So obviously, he wouldn't like how Tenenbaum worked. Such a tiny imagination. Content to sit there with the tanks of Adam tweaking and optimizing. I need to create. Our next any functional trait can be observed within Frank Fontaine and Elizabeth DeWitt, and that's the ability to identify potential possibilities from both a business standpoint and a creative one. Su Chong has been using this ability since he was a young adult. He started by selling opium to invading Japanese soldiers during World War II to survive and to fund his scientific businesses. This then extended to Rapture, where he played both Andrew Ryan and Frank Fontaine so he could get the best possible wage. Hell, he even played Elizabeth, who somewhat expected him to betray her, yet it worked. 
Su Chong always got what he wanted, and that's all thanks to his NE function. It's very good for Su Chong. His drive to find possibilities is also present within his plasmid creations and his bizarre ideas of bounding big daddies to little sisters like animals bound to each other. Overall, he's excited by novel ideas and possibilities behind them. But in a way, this is exactly what causes his restlessness we mentioned before. This idea is further reinforced by the amount of discoveries and innovations because of Su Chang's inability of staying still, or his apparent inability of being content with his creations. There's always more to learn and there's always more to experience. Now we'll be looking into one of the downfalls of the NA function, which is assuming things too quickly, and Su Chang is pretty guilty of this. An example of that can be identified within Barrel at Sea. After Su Chong catches Elizabeth trying to exit his impromptu lab, he assumes she must be a vandal since she broke into his lab. His thought process goes like this. Why would she break into my lab if she wasn't here to vandalize it like the others did? Vandal sabotage! You are vandal! Hmm. She has no other reason to be here. His tone and mindset changes quickly when he realizes that Elizabeth wants to help fix the Lutes machine. He sees an opportunity and utilizes it, and exploits her into doing his bidding. Open the tear! Power for devices, very expensive. Teach for that? Just tell me what you want. We'll be looking at three more any examples since we have sufficient content already. Our first example is heard within Burial at Sea, on an audio recording. Within this message, Su Chong is trying to figure out how to imprint Big Daddies on Little Sisters. He looks through its hair and notices that Fink imprinted the song word on Elizabeth, and assumes that the answer might be in her DNA. If Su Chong could obtain hair sample of Fink's subject, Su Chong could determine delta of genetic material with Little Sister. Su Chong then sends Elizabeth on a wild goose chase to collect her own hair, because he wants to study it for patterns that might help him bond Big Daddies to Little Sisters. After all, it worked for Elizabeth and the Songbird, so why not the Little Sisters and the Big Daddies? It's a possibility. Also, Su Chong didn't realize that the DNA he was hunting for was actually Elizabeth's DNA. He figured the girl he saw in the tear and her had nothing to do with each other. He sent you all the way back here for a sample of your own hair. He doesn't know I was once the child that imprinted on Songbird. And that leads to our final NE examples, which can be heard on two audio diaries, with the first audio diary being located in the houseware areas in the DLC Burial at Sea. In this audio log, Su Chong is excited by a... Unknown phenomenon. Men in strange hats. Women in large dresses. Buildings that float. Is phenomena window to other space? Other time? This stereotypically describes extroverted intuition in a nutshell. Excitement for new phenomena. But seriously, this level of curiosity and excitability for the unknown is attributed to a developed any function. It's wholesome and relatable. Our final any example can be located in Su Chong's apartment. And on that recording, Su Chong connects the puzzle pieces and figures out Frank Fontaine is actually a con man. And like all con men, he's worried he'll end up on the wrong side of a grift. He's just another con man. And like all con men, he worries he'll end up on the wrong side of grief. And that's why he wanted Su Chong to create the antidote to the mental control plasmid within Jack. Fontaine said I better not tell anybody about the antidote. And Su Chong is inclined to listen. Tertiary function, introverted sensing. Dr. Yi Su Chong has a rather developed SI function and uses it to stay consistent within his work and as a guide during hardships. But most of all, he uses it to justify his questionably immoral actions and his apathetic attitude towards others. To explain this, we'll be looking into Su Chong's past, and we'll be placing you, the viewer, into his shoes. The year is 1925, and Su Chong is an adolescent boy living in an oppressed society, where the common citizen must adhere to whatever their overlords desire, and what they desire is to destroy the Korean culture and replace it with their own all while forcing its inhabitants to work the fields. This treatment of the Korean populace does not go unnoticed. Our future scientist watches as the people are treated like animals and tools. And he thinks to himself, how do I avoid being treated like this? And as years pass, he finds a solution. Sell opium to the soldiers to get them addicted, therefore becoming a valuable asset to them and profiting from the situation. This is mentioned within his audio recording found in Point Prometheus. Japanese kill every man in my city, except for Su Chong. Su Chong have opium. Very good opium. This war, terrible thing too, but not for Su Chong. Su Chong was able to avoid being used as a tool by turning other people into his tools. 
he took this lesson with him to rapture and repeated what he experienced throughout his life. This is why Su Chong is the monster he is. He was raised in a society where you needed to prove you were valuable or you'd be used and discarded. And this is what the SI function fundamentally is. Using your past experiences to guide yourself throughout life. And Su Chong definitely displays this type of behavior. God damn it. And as a byproduct of his experiences, Dr. Yi Su Chong displays symptoms of ASPD, antisocial personality disorder, such as irritability or aggression, lack of remorse, and deceitfulness, but isn't considered a sociopath. He, however, does have narcissistic personality disorder, which is painfully obvious. He's an egomaniac, as Elizabeth claims in Barrel at Sea. Never underestimate the fallibility of the egomaniac. Which again can be traced back to his SI function and how he survived and thrived while others died. This obviously would lead to a grandiose sense of self-importance and a plethora of other traits. And as a closing statement to this cognitive function, Su Chong heavily relies on his past experiences to guide him, and often repeats the past without changing himself or how he views them. This is a clear development of his SI function, but within a negative light. If his experiences were much more positive, or at least neutral, Su Chong may have been a much healthier individual. And that leads to our inferior function, extroverted feeling. I'm pretty sure this is painfully obvious at this point, but Su Chong's FE function is painfully repressed and practically ignored. And as an extreme consequence, Yi Su Chong has a temperament of a child and will explode any time he dislikes something or disagrees with an idea. Outrage! Death of intellectual property! But that is not all. It also results in his apathy towards the destruction of people's livelihoods caused by his science. This doesn't mean he doesn't have any empathy. He actively avoids those feelings for his survival. For him, morals have always been unnecessary and silly. All that truly matters is advancement and innovation. A lot of this can be contributed to his overdeveloped TI function and his severely unhealthy SI function, which is the cause of almost all his problems. However, Su Chang does have limited usage of his FE function and uses it when he wants something, such as a race from Andrew Ryan. He simply projects what others want to see in order to benefit himself, and it works. This term is called mirroring. One could also argue that he modifies his beliefs and attitudes towards the society he lives in, such as Rapture, which is a society based on striving towards your goals without moral constraint or care. And by doing so, society will be pulled in the right direction. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our final FE example, and it will be very heavy on spoilers. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, please skip 30 seconds ahead of this. And the ultimate example of his FE neglect can be seen in the last moments of his life, as the little sisters Masha and Lita are trying to get his attention. Su Chong, with his very repressed FE function, smacks Lita, not knowing that he just signed his death contract. I'll let the video tell the rest of the story. What are you doing? Thus ends the life of Yi Su Chang. To many individuals, he's perceived as a monster, and rightfully so. But once you understand the inner workings of his psyche, you can see he's just as much as a victim, as much as he is a monster. And that, ladies and gentlemen, leads to our MBTI conclusion of Yi Su Chang. He's a severely unhealthy INTP. But don't fret, because it's, it's not over yet. Time for the Enneagram Nyet. <laughs> oh man, that's really bad. And I'm gonna go on a whim here and say Yi Su Chang is an Enneagram 5, the investigator. His basic fear is being useless and incapable, which would make so much sense. This is why Yi Su Chang needs to always innovate and find new ways to do things. He wants to feel capable and competent. Su Chang is also rather curious and obviously insightful. He catches on to theories and ideas relatively quickly and will dismantle them with ease with the purpose of learning how it functions so he may understand it. And once he understands an idea, he will transform it and challenge it. But the main problem with Five, however, is if you get too much into your research, you become detached, eccentric, and high-strung. And those are the problems that Yi Su Chang suffers from. The results are disappointing, but within expected tolerances. 
As for his wing, I believe it's six instead of four, mainly because of the practicality and responsibility Su Chong has. Not to mention, he shares a core trait of six, skepticism. Which one of the bitches sent you? Which is usually driven by one's desire of securing themselves. After all, anyone with an Enneagram 6 is naturally more inclined to be more protective and defensive, which Su Chong is. The only trait I don't see of Enneagram 6 within Su Chong is loyalty. But that's because Su Chong is a very unhealthy individual. Su Chong only works for himself and will constantly change alliances in order to benefit himself and grant himself maximum security. And this leads me to conclude that he's an Enneagram 5 Wing 6 with a tri-type of 538, also known as a Solution Master. In basic terms, that means he's driven by knowledge and understanding, thrives off external validation and progression, and lastly is concerned with controlling situations, which may lead to outbursts and aggression. And that concludes this video. If you like what you see, and this thoroughly entertained you as much as it entertained me, feel free to join my cult by hitting that glorious, beautiful, awesome subscribe button. And would you kindly have a wonderful evening, a glorious night, and a fantastic day.